Hello everyone, I'm Doug Fairbanks and this is uh, Lauren West. Presently, as you know, I serve as your interim senior pastor. Lauren is my colleague and she is our associate pastor. I'm gonna share just a few things with you today concerning the life of our church. And then Lauren will step back in in a few minutes and have a closing prayer for us. So thank you, Lauren. Uh, first of all, I want to express my appreciation to all of you, this great congregation at First United Methodist Church in Statesboro, for the way that you received Carolyn and me just some almost seven months ago, and the way you have uh, supported us and loved us these past seven months. And it seems that probably more than likely I will continue to be your interim senior pastor until sometime around June of 2024. So we're looking forward to that. Uh, as always, I greet you in the strong name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. And in that context, I want to applaud you for the marvelous way you have continued through these unprecedented times in the life of this great church to support the mission and ministry of, this, of the work of Christ uh, through First Church. Uh, I have a scripture in mind for times like this that I think it's good for us to remember as we continue to move forward for the greatest cause in the face of this earth. And that is Paul's admonition, Paul's words when he said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You are a living testimony to that text in the New Testament. For we truly can do all things through the Christ who strengthens all of us for the spreading of the gospel. Now that brings me to this coming Sunday. Our leaders have requested that on this upcoming fifth Sunday, the 29th of October, that we have Sunday school at our regular time, followed by our 11 o'clock worship service. In other words, we will have only one worship service this coming Sunday. Following that service, we are going to have uh, an old fashioned cover dish lunch together in our social hall. And they have asked us to bring a dish of our choosing and the church will be providing the meat. So we want to invite you to this special time of fellowship and food together. Uh, the church would not be the church if we did not pause once in a while and have a great meal together. So please keep that in mind and I look forward to seeing you on Sunday. Uh, also, I want to share with you that this is the time of the year when we begin rethinking and refreshing our various commitments to the cause of Christ. For instance, serving on the various ministry teams of the church. I cannot give enough thanks to our lay leader, Lisa Lee, who has led us in restoring membership to all of our ministry teams. We are up to par on all of those teams. And so many of you when asked to serve have said yes. We have had no one just say, no, I can't do that, I won't do that. We've had just the opposite. You as the people of God have said, what do you need me to do? And you have responded. And so we have our ministry teams uh, at uh, fully staffed and ready to do what we're called upon to do. So we, we think this time of year, how do we rethink and refresh our various commitments? Our commitments to pray, our commitments to serve, our commitments to worship, our commitments to give, and our commitments to witness. Usually during this time of the year, we make a strong effort to look at the budget needs of the church and we make requests of the congregation to support those budgets. The finance committee is hard at work and in a short period of time, we'll have a proposed budget. But along with that, the next few weeks, you will be hearing from me, you will receive a letter and you will receive a estimate of giving card. And we want you to be in prayer and deep thought about what, how, what and how, what you would give and how you would continue your support. No doubt about it, one of our challenges, and a good challenge in a way, 
is for us to give extra consideration to what we give to support the mission and ministry of Christ through First United Methodist Church in Statesboro, Georgia. So I ask you to, to be in very serious thought and deep prayer about your commitment in that regard. Uh, obviously, the scripture talks to us about 10% or second mile giving. Uh, but what I look for in all of this is regularity. And that commitment to give is one of the most important things we ever do for the cause of Christ. Uh, I stand in this beautiful sanctuary amidst what the scripture calls a great cloud of witnesses, surrounded by these beautiful windows, the apostles, the windows of the gospel, Old Testament stories. And then I see names on the floor in this chancel area of people who have supported the work of Christ through this church. So we are not alone in this. As we carry on great traditions of people who've gone before us, one of the ways we do that is how we give and why we give. And why do we give? Is it simply to keep the lights on? Obviously, that's a part of it. Is it simply to do some kind of work in the community? Obviously, that's a part of it. Is it to support the staff? Obviously, that's a part of it. And I can go on and on and on to all these things, the practical aspects of why we give. But I do not want us to lose sight that we are here for one reason. And everything we do is for that one reason. We are here to make witness to the Son of God, Jesus the Christ, our Lord and our Savior. We ask ourselves, really, we should be asking ourselves a question during this time of year when we rethink and refresh our commitments. Am I all in for Christ? Am I all in for the one who has given his all for me so that my sins are forgiven and I have the gift of eternal life? So as you rethink, refresh, and pray about your financial commitments, please keep in mind why we do what we do, why I would even stand in this beautiful sanctuary and ask you for that kind of support. It is that we might continue to make a strong witness in this community to the Savior of the world, your Savior and my Savior, Jesus the Christ. I continue to appreciate being among you, and I give thanks to God that Carolyn and I have the privilege to serve Christ with you in this place. Now I'm going to ask uh, Reverend West, Lauren, to come and have a closing prayer for us. God bless you. Please join me in prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we just give you thanks today. Thank you for this church and the ministry it has, the ministry it's had in the past, the ministry it has now, and the ministry that will go on in the future. Lord, we thank you for the privilege of serving you. Often we get sidetracked or just kind of caught up in going through the motions. So help us all, Lord, pastors included, congregation, just to reexamine our priorities this time and why we give, what we're giving. And may we just be open to your Holy Spirit if there are different ways you would have us give. And Lord, we know money's important, but really as human beings created in your image, we owe you our very lives. May we each be a living sacrifice, Lord, and testimony to you. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.